Hello my crafty friends. I wanted to show you how I created the pages and the pockets and tags for my latest junk journal that I created, the Seahorse Magic one. I posted the video of the flip through yesterday on my channel and I will link that in the description of this video if you'd like to have a look at that but this video I sort of just filmed myself decorating the whole book so it's quite lengthy I have put it at high speed so that I don't bore you to death and I will talk through each of the elements that I use on the pages some are repeated and I do this to have continuity through the journal uh, and some maybe uh, inspire you to create something in your journals or some new techniques that you could use as you know, there's no right or wrong way in decorating your journal. You could make it as simple as you want or as overloaded. It all depends on your personal style and the theme of your journal. There are many ways, tools and techniques to decorate your journal. This is just my style and the way I do it. It's definitely not the only way. You could just get some inspiration if you wanted and just get some ideas just to help you with your journal or any other craft project that you may be doing. On this first page, I'm creating a double pocket that'll house some tags. I've used two pieces of cardstock that I've cut at different sizes and I've just sewn around with the sewing machine. You would have seen I didn't cut these or measure these. I just used a ruler to rip them down to size. I like the rough look, but it's certainly not every style. Some journals are more neat and tidy and, and would require measuring and everything to be exact. This is a receipt book that I use to log all the journals I make. So I started with obviously number one, this is the, my 48th journal and I just jot down the date of when I made it and the general theme or if it was a design team project or a custom one that was for an order just so I can keep record of what I made and also just to keep count. The first tag I made, and this tag is from the digital kit that I used for this journal. It is a digital kit by Louise Heinzel. You can find her on Etsy and she's got some beautiful kits that you can purchase and download. I will put the link of that in the description of my video. The first tag I stuck onto a piece of plain cardstock and then put a hessian string at the top. This one I glued double-sided and just left that into the pockets. On this one I'm just going to decorate with some different elements. I don't always plan what I'm going to do. I work quite intuitively and I just go with um, what I feel at that moment. I started with some turquoise acrylic paint that I put down the side and I'm using some texture paste and a stencil that looks sort of like bubbles and just pressing that through. I'm adding a piece of text from a book and as you can see I've left it just rough and sort of over, I stuck it over the edge, it's not in line with the page, I like it hanging over. I've also put a piece of cheesecloth and here I'm using another piece of text that I've sort of done like a Constantina, I've just pressed it and folded it and glued so it folds up and just gives a little bit more texture and lifts up and is a bit more bulky. You'll notice sometimes I paste my text upside down or sideways. I really don't mind and I don't think it always needs to be the right way around. It's not something someone is going to read. It's there just for effect. So I don't mind that it's sometimes upside down. I'm now going to fussy cut one of the seahorses from the kit and paste that down on my elements. I use a combination of hot glue, a glue stick and craft glue depending on what I'm sticking down. I'm now going to add some splatter with a turquoise acrylic paint. I water it down a little bit more than the regular thickness just that it splashes really well and just putting a few little splat splashes here and there. I 
I add a lot of random bits and pieces. This is just a piece of cardstock that I had as part of the pages that I've used and I've taken a piece and just stuck that down as a tab. For this page, I'm just spreading some texture paste with my palette knife, just randomly on both the pages. And then I'm also going to add some purple. The colors I'm using are obviously connected to the seahorses throughout the journal. There's beautiful turquoises, blues, purples, and pinks. I'm just doing a bit of a splatter. I didn't like the splatter on this page, so I tried to scrape it off with a palette knife and then I added more texture paste and the purple paint with the palette knife so it's different to the splatter effect on the left. I'm adding this project life card that says live for today. The colors suit it really really well. I love that pinky purple color and I'm just sticking this down with some double sided tape. I'm also adding some washi tape. It's a glitter washi tape. I want it to look as if it's just sort of been pasted on there roughly. I'm now going to create a snippet strip that's going to go down the left of the page. And to do this, I'll just take a piece of cardstock or paper that's sort of the length of the page. And then I add different elements that link up into the rest of my project. So I've got the same colors. I like a lot of texture in this, so I've got some tool over there some um, netting i sometimes use some cheesecloth there's some of the hessian ribbon the different colors coming through and i just sort of fix them here and there it doesn't have to be exact it's sort of just bringing up the colors and i leave them quite big because i want them to hang off the page and then i'm going to machine stitch all the way down just one um, straight stitch just to keep them all together and then I'll paste that down on the edge with the hot glue gun. I think this is a really good element to use to bring the colors of your journal or your project all together and also to add some bulkiness to your journal. I like using this because it makes it quite chunky and I like them to be quite chunky. Here I'm just doing some very simple stamping with an acrylic stamp I have. It looks a little bit like seaweed and I'm using the peacock feathers color to um, just stamp those down. Very, very simple. I find the washi tape doesn't always adhere very well, so I'm just putting a little bit of glue just underneath just to make sure it stays. I'm just going to create a tab for one of the pages and I'm using this old calendar. It's quite thick cardstock and I like the big numbers and I think the blue matches quite well. So I've just cut two numbers and folded it in half and then I'm just going to glue those in place. I'm going to add some color to this page using my um, Distress inks. I've got the mermaid colors. So the first one I put down was the peacock feathers. This one is called Salty Ocean. And I'm just putting them onto an acrylic block, spraying them with water, and then just randomly splushing them onto the page. And this one is called Picked Raspberries. This one is Wilted Violet. And just here and there. And you can see how that builds up the color. I felt the colors were a little bit bright so I've taken some gesso on a piece of cardboard and I've just sort of smushing it down just to lighten up and mute the bright colors a bit. 
I'm now going to add one of these pretty seahorses on the right hand side. I'm not going to cut it with a cutter or a scissors, I'm just going to tear it with the ruler and then I'm just going to make it down to size and just paste that down just like that. I'm going to add some more layered elements to the left hand side of the page. Like I said, I don't really have a plan for this. I sort of just do it as I go. I try different layers. I, I try different pieces of paper, different colors, until I find something that works. I use cheesecloth a lot in a lot of my projects. I just find it gives the projects great dimension and a, a lot of texture. Now, if you don't have any, I would really recommend that you invest in some. It's really inexpensive. You can get it from a craft store. Um, shop here in Australia you can get it for about two or three dollars for a couple of meters and a couple of meters will go a long way and I have found other tricks which I'll show you later in the video adding gesso to the cheesecloth but I just love the way it works and it works in most projects whether you're doing a vintage a modern whether it's really neat and tidy or a bit more grungy it really works um, it's a really great um, tool and I love using it you can see how I'm connecting the pages. I'm using the same calendar that I used for the tab in one of the earlier pages. I'm putting the number 26 on this one from the same calendar so it connects. And then I'm also going to do some stenciling with uh, texture paste using the same stencil as I used in the beginning of the journal. And I find this is how you can sort of get everything to be cohesive and to not all be disjointed. It all connects and the theme flows through. Some pages I also like to keep simple. This one I'm just adding a small pom-pom trim to the end. Adding another double pocket here to house some more of the lovely tags that are available in the kit. I don't want to hide the face of the mermaid, so I'm just going to use a piece of vellum for the bottom part of the pocket so that the design still shines through. And just stitching that with the sewing machine to straight stitch all the way around. For this one I decided to put a blue cardstock background behind the pocket just so the page isn't quite so white. Usually with digital kits I will coffee stain everything and then I find that if you have a few blank pages if they're coffee stained it's fine. For this kit I didn't feel the coffee stain would suit it so I left it white and I did find that there was a lot of white pages throughout the journal so I felt I had to do more designing and decorating in the specific journal as compared to the ones that I do with coffee staining. There are lots of ways to use the tags that you get in digital kits. Um, I mostly just stick them onto a cardstock just to make them stiffer and to have the back part which is more plain that you can use for writing and for journaling.
for this tag I'm just adding some text with a piece of fabric as a tab and then I've also added a plain tag and then this is a large project life card which I thought the color suit I'm just trimming it down so that it can fit in the back pocket and this double pocket is finished Adding another page tab with some of the text. Here I'm adding another snippet strip. I'm doing it the same as I did the first one, just using different colors, different elements, but in the same, using the same technique. This piece of paper is actually just a working sheet that I work on for another project. It's just the spill over and I just found that the colors suited this really, really well. And instead of throwing it out, I decided to use it. I've just cut a piece of the color that I like and I'm using that in the project. I am going to stitch this with the sewing machine. I'm just putting a little bit of glue just to try and keep the elements in place so I know where they go. Because as I lift it up to put it by the sewing machine, they tend to slide off. This page was feeling a bit empty, so I'm just adding a few little elements. The cheesecloth, I'm going to add some color to it using some ink. I don't want everything just to be white. So I've just put a little bit of the ink on the acrylic block, put some water, and I'm just um, moving the cheesecloth around and then I'm just drying it and it's a beautiful turquoise color. I really like the way the cheesecloth turned out turquoise, so I'm just going to color a little bit more, a bigger piece that I can use through the rest of the journal at a later stage. Here I'm just adding a little bit of the ink with some water, just a very watered down version, just to give the page a little bit of color. The darker spots you see is just because the water has soaked through the page and the print from the other side is shining through, but once I dry it, you can see that it has um, disappeared. If you missed it earlier, this digital kit with the seahorses is by Louise Heinzel. The link will be available in the description of this video.
the tags seem to be falling to the side a bit so I'm just adding a paper clip just to hold them in place and I've chosen a green one to match the tag at the back. another page cluster and I'm building it up the same way as I did the previous ones. This is just a watercolour pencil that I'm dipping the point in some water as I draw and as you can see it creates thicker and thinner areas uh, which create a lot of interest. This is just a ready-made die cut that I'm using. Sometimes you don't need too much. You can balance out between the busy pages and the calm pages. And this one has just got the sort of the profile of the seahorse coming off the page. You will see me repeating techniques and elements throughout the journal. This is just a way to keep everything linked up and to keep the whole journal cohesive. I've added some gesso to the right hand side of the page just to waterproof it because I'm going to use some inks and now I'm just using my texture paste and another stencil and just putting that onto the page. I'm just using some watered down ink. I'm dipping my paintbrush in and then I'm painting in between the grooves of where the stencil is. I then spray with water and as you can see the water helps the ink flow and it goes in between all the grooves and spreads out in a beautiful watery pattern. I'm going to add another pocket here. I love lots of tags in my journal, so I do tend to add quite a lot of pockets to house all those tags. You will also notice that I don't trim the strings off the bits that I sew. I tend to leave the strings or threads hanging. I like this as it just adds to the texture and the appeal of the whole journal. I like seeing them coming out of the book. You don't have to leave them. You can trim them short if you prefer, if you want more of a neater type of look. But I like them long and stringy. Again, I'm sticking the printable on some cardstock just to make it firm and to give it a plain side at the back to be able to journal on.
for one of these tags I decided to stitch around with the sewing machine just a straight stitch all the way around the tag. I don't always go for the traditional string in the whole of the tag. I like to add different elements. So for this one, I've added a piece of text paper and a pom-pom trim that I've just stitched with the sewing machine. I love the look of numbers in the journals and in any elements that I make. So you'll see me using these old calendar pieces quite often throughout all my projects. This purple element, um, I'm not quite sure if it's a fabric or a really thick tissue paper. I got it in a bunch of flowers that I received. It was just wrapped around the flowers and it's quite thick. It feels like tissue paper and tears well, but it's quite thick and like fibrous, like a fabric. It's really, really beautiful. So, um, and I love the purple color. So I decided to use some of it in the journal. I'm just putting it down the middle, um, just folded. So it's not just a straight line. I've added some text from a novel and then the turquoise cheesecloth and I'm going to add a tag and just finish off the whole collection. I don't like everything just stuck flat. I think it makes it a more interesting, um, makes it more interesting visually if it's a little different. So as you can see, the cheesecloth I've wrapped around the corners of the tag. So it looks like it's sort of um, wrapped around it. And I think that looks a lot more interesting than just having it one flat on top of the other. I'm just going to finish it off with some texture paste through the stencil. The stencil I've used on the cover of the journal at the back cover and throughout the journal um, so it connects everything together. And I'm not just stenciling over just the white part of the page. As you can see I'm actually going over the cheesecloth, over the different layers and I think that really makes it a lot more fun. I made a couple of meters of ruffles, paper ruffles with the sewing machine uh, before I started the project. I just used the same colors that are throughout the journal and then you'll see me using it through uh, on some of the pages. And I've used not just one color, I've mixed the purples and the greens, so one ruffle 
on a page could have multiple colors um, so just any off cuts that you have any little scraps just sew them into the ruffle and use them in the project another scrappy snippet strip for this page To make my journals more chunky, besides the snippet strips that I create, I also like to put a lot of tabs that hang out of the page and I make them not, they don't always have to be the same size or shape and they can be made of anything like that. I just put one of the printables folded in half and just stuck down, sticking out of the page. Not every tag needs to be in a pocket. I decided against the pocket for this one and I've just pinned it onto the page with a large paper clip. You can never have too many ruffles. I'm adding another double pocket here but I'm doing it a little bit different just so that not everything is exactly the same. I'm using a double sided Kayser Craft cardstock. I like to use these because the sides are normally complementary, the colours and the designs and I like this one for this journal. I like the spotted turquoise and then the other side looks a bit sort of like sandy beach with a bit of the pink and I've just torn them with a ruler at an angle. The back one is slightly larger and taller than the front one. I've then stitched them around with a sewing machine just to put them together and then adhere them to the page. I'm going to fill the pockets with some tags. I'm using some ready-made tags and some tags using the printable kit that again I'm adhering to a cardstock. My glue stick has now finished. I don't have another one in my craft room, so I'm just going to glue the rest of the stuff that I need with some Mod Podge. That's all I have handy at the moment. I'm just using a piece of turquoise fabric offcut as the tab of this tag. And this page will get, you guessed it, a snippet strip.
I'm using a watercolor pencil in turquoise, dipping the tip in the water and just going around the edge to give it a bit of a turquoise finish. The ink has seeped through a little bit uh, to the other page and I don't really like the look of that so I'm just going to cover it up with some layered embellishments. Another way I like to use the cheesecloth is I add a little bit of gesso to it. Just on a paintbrush I just dab the gesso here and there just in some blobs and clumps. It doesn't have to be smooth. It's meant to be like rough and chunky and once you dry it the cheesecloth actually goes a bit like crispy and you can see all the blobbies of the gesso and I think it looks really really nice and I use that quite a bit and I love the I like using um, the cheesecloth in that way This is a paper ruffle that I've made from some white vellum.
For this page I'm going to make a little shaker box element. I think this is probably my favorite element of the whole journal. So I'm just going to use a, I need a base for the shaker box. I'm using a piece of this tag and then I'm just going to add inside any little um, items that I have. I've got some little sequins, some little um, gems, I also do little punchies. I use my little heart punch that I have just with cardstock and also my little hole punch. I use the little oh, um, round bits from the hole punch and you can do that and you can choose any color cardstock that you wanted to put in and I just empty that out and put it inside and just fill it up with all different elements and then I'm going to take a piece of tool or the netting that I'm going to put over and just machine stitch all the way around to seal it and that'll be my little shaker box um, it's really cute glittery and a really fun element Isn't that super cute? I'm just going to trim off the excess tool from just around after I've sewn and then I'm just going to stick it to the corner of my page with some double sided tape. I really like to use everything. The piece of turquoise cardstock that I've pasted here, as you can see, has got the hole punches from the little shaker box I made. And I think that's really effective. It's got the little punchy holes in, so it's very different. It adds texture and interest to the page. So no one says it's got to be a perfect piece of cardstock, perfectly trimmed or cut. This one is just torn with little uneven little holes in. But I think it really makes it interesting and fun. Use everything you have. And something else that I use quite a lot is I like to add thread underneath some of my elements. So here I've got some blue thread that I've just cut a piece, scrumpled it up and then paste over the little uh, wording. And I really, really like the effect that that gives. I use that quite a bit.
I'm outlining the seahorse with a black marker just to make it stand out a bit more. Here I'm using a sponge with my inks and I'm just stenciling through the stencil. I was looking for a suitable project life card to add to this page so I looked through my whole stash I have a pretty big one and I couldn't really find anything that suited and was what I wanted for this page so eventually I remembered that I had some color swatches from the paint shop which I then used that instead.
this is a greeting card that I have. I thought the cover uh, really suits the theme. So I've just cut the back off, rounded the corners and added that as a journaling card. Just leaving some areas plain for journaling. The back and the front inside covers, I don't want to leave too plain, so I'm just going to do a little bit of stenciling just to add a little bit of interest.
I kept going back to this page that I did I didn't like it so I wanted to take it out I just ripped it um, with about an inch left which I then glued that piece down onto the other page so that it doesn't fall out on the other side and then I felt a little bit happier because I really didn't like the way that one had turned out I'm just doing a final page through just to check that I'm happy with everything. This page I actually changed during the flip through video. If you wanted to watch that video you can see what things I added to that page. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed watching me decorating my journal. I hope you've learned some, maybe some tips and tricks that you could use in your own projects. I'd love it if you subscribed to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. And I will see you again soon. Bye.